Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a PBO comprehensive guide. I haven't released one of these in a very, very long time. And I have another one lined up for Welstra in the coming few weeks or so. Uh, the layout is a little bit different. So I've got my little camera in the bottom right. Uh, so hopefully this layout looks a little bit better. Um, I think this kind of attracts um, the comprehensive guide a little bit more. Give me your feedback in the comments down below if you like the way that this is positioned. Um, and then yeah, I'll hopefully improve on these uh, comprehensive guides. This will go through pretty much the PBO deck and the meta choice, well, the meta relevant choices that I've made for this deck so that it can compete in the current format with Jet, with Eva going around, and then obviously Wellstra as well. If you guys need any coaching, my Metafy link is in the description below. Feel free to book a session and we can get started. So starting off, we have the PBO ride line. This is, yeah, very stock standard. Uh, you want to run PBO as the leading grade three because then, you know, you ride straight to PBO, get the you know engine going straight away, multi-attacks going straight away. Um, that's pretty much what you want. And then obviously we're playing D, so Persona rides are always good. So you play three more PBOs and then four of the original Phantom Blaster Dragon. This is really crucial. We need four. The reason why is when you get to grade three, you want to always see this in your soul. Uh, you have ways to be able to search uh, blasters, which we'll get to in the grade two slot, but always trying to find, um, I guess, more of these means that you can deck thin, compress your deck, more likely to hit triggers, but also it's to activate PBO's crit effect as early as possible. So that's four PBDs. And then looking at the grade twos, uh, probably PBO's best grade two. So in the main, essentially shove a card from your hand into soul and then draw two. So if you have, you know, ways to search your Phantom Blaster Dragon, then, you know, use this, shove it back in and you immediately get the crit uh, for the uh, PBO. And then this new PR, so Claudna, there is merit to probably reducing this card slightly uh, by one. And then I'll, I guess, inform you of what is best to put in the slot afterwards. So Claudna, this makes your rear guard pressure much better. So I think that's one of the like key points that was missing in PBO before was that the rear guards just slap for power. There was like no threats or anything. Uh, so Claudna pretty much resolves that, giving your blaster dark essentially twin drive. This deck actually draws heaps. So obviously then the main, the drive checks on Blaster Dark. And yeah, this card is actually really good in the meta at the moment because essentially what it does is that it retires the Blaster Dark um, that essentially gets the effect of this, uh, which means that it protects the Blaster Dark from Chrono Jet. And because Chrono Jet bottom decks, you don't really want to bottom deck your Blaster Dark because then that means, you know, you're going to be losing your Blaster Dark for the rest of the game and you have no way of getting it back. As well as Eva, if for some odd reason they play the Grade 2 Research, getting rid of it means that they can't bind it either. Uh, so yeah, this card is absolutely crucial and probably why I run 4 in this deck. But there is merit to only running 3 and then uh, 1 more of the Emelin. So I only run 3. This card is actually really good uh, because it makes your rear guard super big. So on the side that is not Blaster Dark, this thing hits for like huge numbers. So you can probably reduce one Kladna for one more uh, Emelin. Emelin essentially allows you to deck thin through your deck of blasters and then it gains power for each time your blaster attacks. So yeah, uh, merits to running more Emelin than Kladna if you like. If you don't have access to Kladna, feel free to chuck in Emelin. And then the last card that we're running is Drilling Angel, another way to put PBD into Soul. Uh, sometimes if you, you know, see the trends of like what you're searching through, what you've been drive checking, what you've been ditching, uh, there might be some cards that you haven't seen in a while. You can just shove it into Soul uh, and then essentially get it off the top three of your deck. So yeah, that's uh, Drilling Angel. Now this is probably the most controversial part. Uh, so the grade ones, there, there's a few different grade ones that I run. So. I don't run the Elementaria, so I run four of the Keter PG because I also run Mugain in this deck and if I see an Elementaria at the top deck, then it's gonna feel bad. But there is merit for removing one for Elementaria if you are scared of Jet. Uh, so if you're playing into like a full Jet 
like, I guess, environment that I would probably take one out for the Elementaria. Uh, but yeah, playing four of these to make sure that I have a body uh, when I call off the Mugen. And then it just means that I have recurring units on the board turn and turn again. And then I think that's really important, especially if this deck tries to rush. And I think rushing in the early game in this current metagame is so huge because you're playing against Jet and playing against Eva. So four of the Keta PG. And as I explained before, play Mugen. I only play two and there is a specific reason why I only play two. Uh, this deck was actually brought by one of the people who topped the Perth VGCS. Uh, so Tan, he's part of my playtesting group and the way that he built this deck is really good. Um, and I can see the merit why. So Mugen, you know, you place it and then you call uh, random cards off the top two cards of your deck. You don't really want to use it too often. And most of the stuff in this deck, you know, kind of retains itself on the board anyways, unless you use Klodna and get rid of it. Uh, this card is really good if you see it early, but otherwise later into the game, when you compress your deck, you don't really want to mill yourself out of triggers. So hence why we're only playing two. And then this is probably the most controversial bit, which is three Blaster Javelin. So why, why am I running three Blaster Javelin? So meaning four, including the Rhine Line. It's because it's an 8K grade one that turns into a 10K grade one. And why is that so important? It's important because now you can drop this on grade one, you bash, and if your opponent doesn't kill this, right, you don't actually have to commit anything from your hand. This turns into a 10K and it starts hitting your opponent's Vanguard uh, for 10K, which is huge. So that in this current metagame is massive because you're playing against stuff like Eva, like Jet, and you know, they're gonna rush you back. They're gonna counter rush you because you know, they're very weak in the early game, and if they do, then you want to be able to guard with the cards in your hand and keep units on the board uh, to essentially continue that rush, continue that pressure in the early game. So yeah, that's why I play 3 Blaster Javelin. This slot, if you don't like having the Blaster Javelin, and if you don't think that my theory makes sense, uh, you could probably replace it with Mugain, probably one more Emelin, uh, maybe a Drilling Angel. Um, and then there's also like another card that I'll explain a little bit later, uh, which essentially it's like if it's retired, you can solve us one and retire. Um, but yeah, that's like another great one slot that you could run. And then go into triggers, so we play four heals. There's actually a lot of merit to running the crit heal because the meta at the moment is very heavily Eva. Uh, so if you're running crit heals, then it makes Eva guarding a little bit easier. But in terms of if you're playing a Springfest meta, then that means that you are. 33% less likely, or 66% less likely to see an EVA. So you might want to run just generic 15k heals. Uh, and the only stride deck at the moment is Chronojet until Messiah comes along. Uh, so the grade heal doesn't really work too well. So probably playing the 15k heal is suitable in this case. And then other things that I run, obviously one OT because OT is busted. Uh, four fronts. So the good thing about this is that this deck draws a lot. Purely because in the main, you get free units off Drilling Angel if you hit it. Uh, Mugain early, you search out your normal units and you compress your deck. Uh, so committing to a board is actually very minimal, which means that the quality of cards in your hand um, is probably better than the quantity of cards in your hand. Uh, because you're drawing so much, you're conserving so much in your hand that you're better off guarding as 20k instead of you know using a 10k off the draw and this deck actually churns through the deck a lot um so you might actually find yourself decking out as well and then eight seven crits uh you can turn this crit into a 5k crit if you like and to be honest it's probably a better move than playing the intersoul crit just because if you call this off like mugain early you want to hit 13s uh and you don't really want to hit you know 12s and whatnot uh, but this is good behind like anything that is like 10k or like uh, Emelin because each time it stacks it becomes like 10, 15, 20. Uh, so it hits uh, like over a tier. But if you put this like behind like a 13k, it only hits 17 so it doesn't really hit tier later on in the game. So yeah, that's pretty much the trigger lineup. Now I explained before that there was a card that I would uh, put in if you don't like the Blaster Javelin and it is uh, this. So, a Rodmez. So, this card is good uh, if you wish to retire, but the thing is, is that in this meta at the moment, Eva has protection on their Obscadades, uh, and there's not really much you want to retire anyways. 
uh, in the Overlord matchup, probably like the Burning Horns, um, Jet, maybe the Swirlers or whatever. But this card, it's a trade one for one, kind of. So you retire this off like the PBO, so boss one and then uh, kill something else. But to be honest, like I would rather a card like Blasted Javelin in the early game where I can call stuff, start bashing, and then if your opponent doesn't bash back or retire them or attack into them, then it's like a, a card that I don't need to commit on the next turn so that I can rush, you know, 10k, 10k again. Uh, so which is why I think the Blasted Javelin is just so good because it, it becomes an 8k the first time you attack into like your opponent's 8k Vanguard and then it turns into a 10k which attacks into your grade two, your opponent's grade 2 vanguard uh, which is massive so yeah this is another card that you can put in um, otherwise there's not really much option uh, in terms of PBO because you know PBO got a lot of tools uh, that kind of makes this deck a little bit better so Claudna, Emelyn, these two PRs are absolutely game changing for this deck and I think that's pretty much what takes up most of the slots that were a little bit flexible before. Um, there is merit if you don't, uh, I guess, own many Clodners, then you can start to turn this into Blaster Darks because then that way, you know, you don't feel bad if your opponent like bottom decks your uh, Blaster Dark, you know, when you're versing Chrono Jet because you have like replaceable stuff. Uh, and you can, I guess, find like Blaster Dark pretty easily if you're like churning through your deck with like the mains. Oh man, I don't think this can, right? Oh yeah, you can. So you can search Blaster Dark off the Emelin as well. So you can like play Emelin, I mean Blaster Darks in the Clodna slot if you don't own the Clodnas, but I think the Clodna is just so good uh, giving your Blaster Dark uh, rear guard drive check. Super, super impactful. So how does this deck go into the metagame at the moment? Uh, it, I guess this particular build is built to beat Eva and beat Jet. So I had a discussion with the player that played this deck at the Perth VGCS and he played I think three Evas and beat all of them and purely because of the Blaster Javelin. The Blaster Javelin allows you to just commit, like I said before, attack for 8 and 8 and then it turns into 10s which is absolutely massive um, and I think even it just sits there as the 10 anyways because you have a Blaster Vanguard. Um, but this deck is purely built to uh, beat Jet and beat Eva because of its rush potential early and then you know you're riding up to PBO and you're gonna immediately get you know four attacks if you put a booster behind your Vanguard then that's like what 21 which hits magic numbers um, against you know your opponent's great two Vanguard so yeah this is pretty much like how I would build it if I were to bring it to a spring fest maybe to like i don't know indonesia or whatever your next spring fest this is probably how i would build it purely because it essentially goes up against two of the best decks in the format at the moment how this goes into uh something like overlord though uh the deck itself like i said before you know goes through your deck um quite a lot so you actually find a lot of pgs as you go um so you know guarding against PBO might be a little bit rough. I mean, sorry, Dragonic Overlord uh, in the earlier might be a little bit rough, but otherwise, I think uh, as the as the game just kind of progresses, you have like you know twin drives off this. Um, you know, you're drawing off the mains. You're compressing with Emelin. You're bound to hit your PGs, um, and I mean like because you're really conserving your hand a lot, um, then you know you're gonna have like a bunch of these triggers in hand to be able to guard anyways. Um, stuff like you know. Uh, well straw and stuff like that your your board is like pretty replaceable especially because like you're going through your deck heaps you have like a pretty big hand um, then you don't really care too much if Wellstra retires and the best thing about Wellstra is that you kind of treat it like Eva uh, so you rush early punish them early um, and yeah pretty much then you get to the point where you kind of just need to survive one turn of Wellstra and then you pretty much win the game um, that's kind of where you want to get to and earlier on this deck does that because it rushes early gets your opponent to high damage and it starts pressuring your opponent um, in terms of I guess lines of play with this deck there's not really much um, other other than like you know committing the blasted javelin in the front uh, start attacking early if you play like the clodners early you keep at the front if your opponent attacks into it then good then that means that 
you know, you, you save yourself like a 15k or you don't need to guard against one of your opponent's attacks. Emelyn is like a, f a free rearguard target because your opponent doesn't really want to deal with like a big rearguard anyways. So they just attack into the rear guards, and that's a good thing because then they're not attacking into your vanguard. Um, and pretty much this deck is free, right? PBO when you ride up, you're just gonna sack two and call a blast dark, and it's free. There's no CB. Like I think the only CB you use is like blast of dark itself, and then like the main, and then yeah, that that's pretty much it. Like uh, otherwise, this deck is completely free. This soul blast one, this sacks itself. Uh, this is just a vanilla in this deck pretty much because you're searching an off Emlyn and then ditching it anyways. Um, but yeah, this deck is super free. You can actually guard yourself at zero and then just keep bashing your opponent, keep bashing and yeah, just win the game because, you know, the early game pressure with this deck is actually like really impactful, especially against Eva, especially against Jet at the moment. And yeah, this is probably the quickest comprehensive guide. Uh, there's not really much to kind of talk uh, about with this deck. Uh, I think when you get into like uh, specifics on like what to swap, so if I play um, into like Eva's, then I would swap the heals for the crit heal here. And then if you don't like the blasted javelin, then I would swap it for a run mess. But otherwise, everything else in this deck is kind of irreplaceable. Um, you want to always find max uh, PBDs because you know you need it for the crit so the more you run the more chances of you to see it uh persona ride persona ride there is a uh a conversation where you could run chalice so if you know don't like the blaster uh, javelin then you can take one out for the chalice uh swapping the 4k crit to 5k crit uh you can run draws but i would highly deter away from running draws just because this deck actually goes through your deck super quick and you probably will end up decking out. Um, again, you probably swap a Claudna for an Emelyn. Um, and if you don't own Drilling Angel, which is quite hard to believe because it got reprinted as uh, a card in the uh, shop tournament promo pack, uh, then you could probably run like more Emelyns, uh, probably a run Mez, and then still run the Blast of Javelin as well. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Click a like if you liked it. Comment down below what you guys think of this deck. It's a little bit controversial, I think, uh, to say that this deck is like good into Jet. I'm not saying it's like a good, good deck, like a deck that I will 100% bring to a Springfest, but it can match up into Jet and can match up into Eva um, if played correctly. If you guys haven't already, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.